Hi, Kipsters. Uh, we're going to proceed with our series on probability by talking about how we list possible outcomes for compound events. Uh, just going over a basic overview, listing means to actually, have, actually write them all out. Possible means uh, what can actually happen. And outcomes are just another word for results. Uh, and compound events are are events where you have more than one event. Uh, so if you have two events, you have a compound event. If you have three events, you have a compound event. Because the definition of compound events is more than one event. Another way to think about it is two or more events. Okay? All right, let us move forward and talk about how we're going to do this. All right, the question asks us, uh, Elise is planning the menu for a dinner party. And she wants to serve one main dish and one salad. For the main dish, she can make vegetable skewers, pizza, pasta, or chicken. For the salad, Elise knows how to bake, how to make potato salad or fruit salad. Make a tree diagram and list the possible outcomes below. Uh, this is a classic example of a question you would get if you were having to uh, be asked to list the possible outcomes for your uh, compound events. So this would be a question that you'd be asked if you had to answer a question about possible outcomes and listing them. All right, let's make sense of this. Let's use a mathematical practice and make sense as we read this problem through. All right, Elise is planning the menu for a dinner party. If you want to envision it, you can think of a menu. All right, here's our menu. All right, she wants to serve one main dish and one salad. So we know here she's going to serve her main dishes, and here she's going to serve her salads. Okay. For the main dish, she can make vegetable skewers. All right, so I have vegetable skewers. I'll represent that by a V. She can make pizza. I'll represent that with a P. Pasta, if I represent it with a P, I might get confused, so I'll go with the next letter, represent it with an A, P-A, pasta, or chicken with a C. For the salad, now I'm done with the main dish, now the salad. For the salad, Elise knows how to make potato salad. So I'll put uh, P-S here, and, or fruit salad. So I'll put F here. I'll put P-S only because the... Uh, the P is over here as well. All right, make a tree diagram and list the outcomes below. Now, going back here, she wants to serve one main dish and one salad. So what are the possible outcomes of this? Uh, first, you go to your main dish. All right, here's how you make your tree diagram. Go to your first event, uh, so to speak. Your first event is main dishes. How many outcomes do you have there for? List them. Uh, on in your tree diagram. So we'll have V, P, A, C. And we know what these letters stand for. All right, we go to our next event. I've listed, the first step is to list the outcomes of the first event. Go to the next event. How many outcomes do I have there? There are two. So I'm going to draw two lines uh, below each letter. One, two, one, two, one, two and one, two. And then I'm going to list those outcomes below each. Potato salad and fruit salad. Potato salad. Fruit salad. Potato salad. Fruit salad. Potato salad. Fruit salad. And you get the point. All right. Now that's it. There are no more, uh, no more events that I have to deal with. Now I've made my complete tree diagram. Now I'm going to list the possible outcomes. And how we list our possible outcomes is we just take a look at what we've written. And we actually just connect the lines going straight down, uh, saying hyphen every time that we pass through a branch on our tree diagram. OK? All right. So our first outcome is going to be V hyphen PS. 
Next, V hyphen F. Next, P hyphen S. Sorry, PS. And P hyphen F. And then our next outcome is A hyphen S, P S. A hyphen F. And then it's C hyphen P S. And then it's C hyphen F. And I've listed my possible outcomes. Uh, I could either pick a vegetable skewer or a potato salad. I could pick a vegetable skewer or a fruit salad. A pizza or potato salad, a pizza or fruit salad. I could pick pasta or a potato salad. And I could also pick, uh, let's see, A stands for... A stands for pasta, yes. I could either pick pasta or uh, fruit salad, or I could pick chicken with potato salad or chicken with fruit salad. So those are my possible outcomes right there. Interestingly enough, I hope you see that there's some structure built into this. I have VPAC, VPAC, and then I also have PSF, 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 all the way down, okay? And you should be able to, to identify when... Uh, you can make a new road to see the pattern, or if you want, you can list them vertically across here. Your choice. All right, let's go to the next problem. All right, Pamela is planning a vacation. A mathematical practice is to make sense of the problem as you go through. So let's do that. Uh, she's planning a vacation. For each place, another word for place is location, uh, she can get there by taking a car or a bus. All right, so those are our modes of transportation, I guess. Uh, she can go to a city, a river, the ocean, the mountains, or a lake. She picks one mode of transportation, so that's my mode of transportation. Put transportation and one location. So these are the categories or the events that we'll be dealing with. What are the different combinations that Pamela can choose from? Well, let's go to back to transportation. Those are the means of how she's going to travel. For each place, she can either get there by taking a car or a bus. So a car or a bus. And I'll write these out this time. All right. Uh, and then the location can either be a city River, ocean, mountains, I'll put MTS for short, or a lake. And I'll represent each of these by letters. So we have a key this time, so I'm not trying to figure out what A is standing for. Car, bus, I'll pick I for city, because I've already used the C. Uh, river. Ocean, mountains, lake. All right, let's move forward. All right, it says she can pick one mode of transportation. So we list, we look at our first event, and we list the outcomes of the event, and that is C and B. So there are only two. Then I look at the next event, and I see how many there are. One, two, three, four, five. All right, now I'm going to draw five different branches below each letter. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. All right, next, I'm going to list those outcomes. And it is city, river, ocean, mountains, lake. So I'll put I, R, O, M, L. I, R, O, M, L. And then I will actually list those outcomes by connecting the branches. All right, so I have C hyphen I. C hyphen R, C hyphen O, C hyphen M, C hyphen L. Now I'll go to the next one, B hyphen I, 
B hyphen R. B hyphen O. B hyphen M. And B hyphen L. Okay? And I've listed all the possible outcomes. Uh, for those of you who are savvy and are starting to catch on here, if you want to if you want to check to see how many outcomes you should have uh, see how many outcomes you have here I have two uh, and the outcomes that I have for this are five if I take two times five that should give me ten different outcomes that I should have listed let's check to see if this makes sense one two three four five six seven eight nine ten yes I have ten events uh, ten outcomes therefore this is reasonable and I've checked to make sure that the pattern works. C B C B C B C B C B and I R O M L. All right, we have one more to go. It's not going to be as simple as the first two we've done. So get your brains ready, but I know you can handle it. 